colleagues later this afternoon. Uh, your president uh, took me to the uh, display of all these uh, robotics ex expeditions, and they are truly amazing. It was, uh, it was just uh, tremendous to see all that. Well, I have a few uh, overheads that my friend is going to help me with, so if you can go to the next one for me. This is where we work. This is the Center for Computational Quantum Chemistry at the University of, of uh, Georgia. It's a wonderful new building. We have had uh, one PhD student graduate from this building from IIT Bombay, and uh, we are hopeful that another student is going to join us in August from IIT Bombay. And of course, many other students, faculty members, Professor Mishra has visited with us uh, from, from chemistry here, and, and many others from other Indian universities. Uh, the next one. This shows a picture of the research group last summer. So it's a group of about, uh, we bring it down a little bit, a group of about uh, 30 people. Uh, about half of these working on their PhDs, uh, five uh, permanent staff members, and uh, typically five uh, visiting uh, professors. So, oh, that's great, thank you. So this is a, a wonderful place to do research, and we invite uh, many of you to come and, uh, and join us in, in, in the hope that uh, you'll find the excitement uh, at our institute to be something to remember. Um, I think my next slide, okay. Yes, this is a, this is a good beginning uh, to talk about worldview. Uh, every person in this auditorium has a worldview. Um, each one of you has had experiences, variety of types, out of them forms his or her worldview. Carefully thought out worldview reflects the deep hunger <coughs> among human beings for an overarching framework to bring unity to their lives. So that's the general sense in which we want to talk this afternoon. And the next one is going to hopefully introduce you to my own uh, personal interest in the area of astrophysics. This is a, um, a paper that uh, my students and I published in 1973, so that's 35 years ago, and uh, in the, the British journal Nature, work on interstellar molecules, and we continue to work in this area for the entire time since. Many papers published in uh, the, uh, the Astrophysical Journal, uh, and, uh, and elsewhere. So this is our connection to the topic I want to talk about this evening. It's not quite evening yet. It looks dark out there, though. Uh, <laughs> this afternoon, uh, namely cosmology. Cosmology is the study of the universe as a whole. You might say the big picture, its structure, origin, and development. The questions cosmology addresses are profound both scientifically and philosophically. So let me begin with some of the questions. First, is the universe finite or infinite in content and extent? Second, is the universe eternal or did it have a beginning? Third, was the universe created? Uh, if the universe was created, how was this creation accomplished? And what can we learn about the agents and events of creation? Who or what governs the laws and constants of physics? Are these laws the products of chance or something more profound? How do these laws of physics relate to the support and development of life? Is there any existence, noble existence, beyond the observed dimensions of the universe? And finally, is the universe running down? irreversibly, or will it bounce back? That's a question I can give you a definite answer to. Uh, some of the others will have to leave in the more general area of discussion. Now, issue number one, was there a beginning to our universe? This idea has, uh, uh, that the universe had a specific time of origin has been philosophically resisted by some very distinguished scientists, and let me cite a few of them. Arthur Eddington, who experimentally confirmed Einstein's general rel theory of relativity in 1913, stated a few years later, quote, Philosophically,
philosophically. The notion of the beginning of the present order of nature is repugnant to me. I should like to find a genuine loophole. So, some skepticism. Albert Einstein's reaction to the uh, inevitable consequences of his own general theory of relativity appear to uh, acknowledge the threat of an encounter with the supernatural. Through the equations of general relativity, we can trace the development of the origin of the universe backwards with origin. However, before publishing his cosmological inferences, Einstein introduced a cosmological constant, an arbitrary cosmological constant, uh, to yield a static model for the universe, to yield a universe that was infinitely old. Einstein and Eddington and others dreamed of a universe that was infinitely old. Einstein ultimately gave grudging acceptance to what he described as the necessity for a beginning and eventually to what he called the presence of a superior reasoning power. Now, why such resistance to the notion of beginning to our universe? Uh, it's, it's largely because of arguments that go back thousands and thousands of, of, of years. Uh, many of these are capsulized in something called the cosmological argument, which states that the effects of the universe's existence must have a suitable cause. Uh, why such resistance to a definite beginning to the universe? It's all the cosmological argument. And let's attempt to uh, divide it into the three parts. First, everything that begins to exist must have a cause. This is cause and effect. It's difficult to carry out science without this uh, principle of cause and effect. Uh, second, suppose the universe began to exist. Well, third, if that were the case, the universe must have a cause. And I think you can see that could be leading in a direction that, that might be uncomfortable. Uh, Robert Dickey, a famed Princeton physicist, was another who dreamed of a universe that was infinitely old, and he stated that an infinitely old universe would relieve us of the necessity of understanding the origin of matter at any finite time in the past. So, much unhappiness with the idea of a beginning. <coughs> And I can state it even more strongly than that. Uh, Walter Ernst, the discoverer of the third law of thermodynamics and uh, Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, uh, made this statement toward the end of his life, to deny the infinite duration of time would betray the very foundations of science. That's, that's a very strong uh, association. Uh, in his uh, excellent little book entitled The Big Bang, Simon Singh, uh, three years ago, uh, made this statement that Fred Hoyle, a uh, famous astrophysicist, was, was equally scathing when it came to the Big Bang's association with religion, condemning it as a model built on Judeo-Christian foundations. Let me quote from Hoyle himself, quite an interesting statement, he said this, the passionate frenzy with which the Big Bang cosmology is clutched to the corporate scientific bosom evidently arises from a deep-rooted attachment to the first page of Genesis. Religious fundamentalism at its strongest. Uh, Stephen Barr, distinguished particle physicist uh, in, uh, in North America, summarized what I've been trying to say so far with this quotation, the historical fact is that Christians believe in the beginning of time, while scientific materialists strongly preferred the idea of an ageless universe. 